Peter here, aka Peter Freak Out Turn, baby. What's up, bitches, hoes, men, women, and children, whatever species you are, it's your boy Peter, aka Peter Freak Out 10, bringing you guys another movie review today, and it's another comic book film. Now, the last time when we delved into the world of comic book films, it was a big step up from where we last were, because... For those who don't know, I reviewed Iron Man, and that was a fantastic comic book film. And here is where we are today. And today we're looking at a film that is another adaptation of a character that, let's just say, his last outing kind of let me with a little bit of some bad green taste in my mouth which relates to the character today that this comic book is based on and i think you guys know what it is but yeah the last time we visited this character and he had his big screen adaptation didn't really go so well so now here we are many years after the, and it's time to see if they can make a better version of this and what film are we talking about today? It can only be described with this statement. Hulk smash, motherfuckers! Hell yeah, we are looking at the Incredible Hulk, baby. So, how does this version of the Hulk do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get our gamma radiation inside of us, grab whatever color we can get, and turn ourselves green, and let's see how the Incredible Hulk does in his second act. Now, the Incredible Hulk, this is a film made in 2008, and it's directed by a guy named Louis Leterrier. Now, Louis Leterrier, this is actually a guy who's had his hand at some great action films, as he directed the first Transporter, which he co-directed with uh, Corey Yoon, as Corey directed some of the action scenes, but he was mostly solo when he did Transporter 2. But he also did Unleashed with Jet Li, which I actually think is a very interesting Jet Li film. It's a very different one from his usual outings. If you guys haven't seen that, give it a watch. But this is, of course, based on the Incredible Hulk character and his comic book series created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, which started its run in issue one in May of 1962. And this is the second attempt to adapt the Hulk. The first one being aptly named Hulk from 2003, which was directed by Ang Lee, which starred Eric Bana and Jennifer Conley, which for those who have followed my channel would know that I already reviewed it and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Need more information, definitely check out the review. But despite the weak box office return of that film and its mixed reception, they were actually trying to move forward with a sequel to that movie. But in the middle of planning, Marvel Studios reacquired the rights to the whole character and they decided to reboot it. Enter Louis Leterrier himself, who actually attempted to get Iron Man. But as you know, John Favreau got that job. But Marvel was like, hey, on the other side, we're doing this Hulk movie. Would you like to direct? To which he agreed, as he also liked The Incredible Hulk too. And he chose a script written by Zach Penn, which drew influence from the TV series, as well as Bruce Jones's run on The Incredible Hulk. To which Universal agreed with their choice of a script and gave them a budget of 137.5 to 150 million dollars. And they got their cast together with Edward Norton being chosen to take on the role of Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk himself. And this was a big deal for Edward, as he was a huge fan of the character and the Incredible Hulk TV show. Originally, he thought about playing the Hulk in the 2003 film, but ended up turning that down when he didn't like the script. And because of the fact that he was a big fan of the character, he actually became more heavily involved in the film's production, so much so he began rewriting aspects that were already written by Zach Penn. And that annoyed the piss out of him. But once the rewrites were approved, they got the rest of their cast again, they began shooting. And to bring the Hulk to life, instead of going with ILM, who did the CGI effects for the Hulk in 2003, they instead went with Rhythm and Hughes, who did the CGI for films like Little Nicky, Scooby-Doo, and Men in Black 2, with some practical effects done for the destruction that the Hulk causes 
and his hands themselves, which were all helped by Tom Woodward Jr., who worked on Pumpkinhead as he was the main guy in the suit for Pumpkinhead. Uh, he did the Alien in Alien 3. So they had some good talent involved, but shooting finished after a certain amount of time, and much like Iron Man, this film was heavily marketed. As they had a deal left over with Burger King from Iron Man, which they applied to this film, 7-Eleven made the green slushies called The Incredible Gulp to promote the movie, Hasbro created a toy line for this film, there was a video game made for this movie by Edge of Reality, and the movie opened on June 13, 2008, and it did well for itself, opening to number one at the box office in its opening weekend, making over $55 million. A much better opening than that of the 2003 Hulk, which made over $24 million in its opening weekend. Sadly, it stayed at the number one spot only for that weekend because next weekend it was dethroned by Get Smart with Steve Carell. And it was nowhere near as big as Iron Man's opening weekend. And this actually finished its run with over $264 million, which is a hit and definitely bigger than... Hulk's 2003 box office return, but to compare it to Iron Man, which is still raining in the big bucks, this is nothing compared to that. I do think it's unfair, though, that some people are saying this movie flopped compared to Iron Man, as that is still running in theaters, and they pulled this early, so people are seeing that, oh, they pulled it early and it flopped, they look at the box office and everything. But this film did make some money. It did well for itself. It wasn't a big box office flop. Uh, I just don't think the executives saw it as the big return they were hoping for. They wanted it, it to be more on the level of Iron Man. But this was made like, this came out like a month after Iron Man. Of course, people are going to go see that and everything. I don't think they thought about seeing this, especially with how big Iron Man is. It was like up here, and I think they wanted it there, but it was more like right there when it, when they wanted it to be higher. But I don't get why they would say it was a flop. Uh, and the film itself, from what I gather, actually got positive reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, it is a 67%. Uh, Critics praised the film for its special effects. They also praised it for the action, Edward Norton's performance, and fixing some of the problems Ang Lee's version of the Hulk had in embracing the feel of the TV show and the comics themselves. However, those that liked Ang Lee's Hulk, in particular Roger Ebert, were very negative of the film, saying it lacked the deep character study of Bruce Banner. The audience side, though, was definitely nicer, as on that side it is a 70%, and on IMDb it is a 6.6 .6 out of 10, much higher than the 5.6 for Ang Lee's version. And among the people I've talked to, they seem to consider this the better Hulk movie. Now, as you guys know, the last time the Hulk was given his chance to shine on the big screen, it really didn't go so well, and that star shined about as well as a burnt-out lamp in need of a new bulb. And I know there were, I want to make something clear. I know there are people who like Ang Lee's Hulk, and that's fine. And I have tried to watch the film with their eyes. I've tried to go back and re-watch it with their points in mind, and... I don't know. Each time I do it, I'm just so bored with it. It's one of those films that just whenever I watch it, I get what it's trying to be. I really get what it's trying to be. But Ang Lee, I, I said this in the review, Ang Lee just felt like he soaks this film as a sponge. Think of it as a sponge, this film. And he soaks it too much in this drama that... I just don't think was needed and it drags the film a lot and the moments with the Hulk are cool and they're really great but it's just it's one of those films that didn't need to be as long as it was it didn't need this whole angle of just this father son drama and Eric Bana himself just was weird in it and they said some stuff would be explained in a sequel. Well, that didn't happen. So when they announced this new Hulk and they said he was coming back with a new movie, 
I was worried, even though it was in the hands of a new director, could he fix those problems I had with the original? Could he fix those problems but also bring in new ones? Or could he fuck everything up? Those were questions I kept asking myself when I saw this was in production. I was very worried. But seeing the trailer, it definitely looked like the Hulk film I thought I was going to get from the first film. So my hopes were still on middle ground and I, because I didn't want to get excited like I did with Ang Lee's version. Because I got excited with that and I came out disappointed. But I was still willing to try it. So I went and I saw it with my bro and I have to say... I wish Hulk 2003 was as fun as this film. I agree with the audience's reaction. This was such a fun, green slamming good time. Along with Iron Man, that show how far comic book movies have come, this is a second step in the right direction. It's a huge step up from the original, and I think the definitive Hulk movie. I don't know if I'd say it's as good as Iron Man, but I think it's great in its own way. And I'll get into why later. But with the cast in this film, of course, as I said, you got Edward Norton from uh, Fight Club and Red Dragon playing uh, Bruce Banner himself. You have Tim Roth as the main villain, Emil Blonsky or Abomination, who was also in Reservoir Dogs. He has a small role in Pulp Fiction. He was the villain in Planet of the Apes. You have Liv Tyler from Armageddon, and she was also in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. She was also in The Strangers, which, of course, I reviewed. You have uh, William Hurt from uh, the Lost in Space movie, and he was also in Dark City. Tim Blake Nelson's also in this from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You even have a small role from uh, Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man. Now, the plot of this movie is basically we meet Bruce Banner, played by Edward Norton, who a long time ago worked as a scientist on this experiment for this guy named General Thunderbolt Ross, played by William Hurt, where he attempted to make super soldiers and make soldiers immune to gamma radiation with the help of his then-girlfriend Betty, played by Liv Tyler. But something went wrong in the experiment and it almost killed Betty. And in anger, Ross ends up exiling him from the project and attempts to get him arrested for what he accidentally did to his daughter and so he can study him, which he does not want as he doesn't want to hurt other people. And basically, he has become a fugitive for the United States as he managed to escape and he's been on the run and he's now in Rio working at a packing factory and he's trying to keep his cool in check. But he's also working on the computer with this guy named Samuel played by Tim Blake Nelson as he's helping him getting a cure going. That is until his location ends up being found out and Ross along with this dude named Emil played by Tim Roth track him down and he unleashes the Hulk, which therefore gets him on the run again. And now he has to find Samuel. And he ends up going to find Betty, who basically decides that she's going to help him. So now they're trying to find Samuel and find a cure. All the while, he has to protect himself and Betty as the military's coming after him. Meanwhile, Emil, who has gone through several failed attempts to try and find Bruce, decides enough is enough and decides to turn himself into the abomination to take down Hulk. So now Bruce has to deal with finding a cure for himself and stopping abomination. Will he find the cure and get himself back to normal? Or will the abomination squish him into a green pancake? Now, as I said, The Incredible Hulk is what I wanted out of the 2003 Hulk film. I think it's a much funner film and more in tune with what I want out of a superhero film. It's definitely more in tune with the modern superhero genre, while the 2003 one was more of a Greek tragedy mixed with elements of superheroism, and the Hulk was in the center of it as opposed to this one. And I think that's the thing that draws me to this one as opposed to the other one. Granted, the struggle of Bruce fighting against his emotion is still there, but it feels better balanced here because it knows when to stop focusing on one and go to the other. And it knows not to put the audience to sleep like the Ang Lee version did, which focused too much on humanizing Bruce to the point that it made Lord of the Rings look like Die Hard in its pacing. Here, I think the pacing is much stronger and it tells enough about Bruce through its opening. Unlike the other one, which was almost three hours and just talky, talky, talky bullshit. Uh, and 
Here, it tells enough about him as he was the guinea pig in his experiment. Something went wrong, and he's on the run. That's all we need to know. And I appreciate that they looked at the Ang Lee film, saw the biggest problem was its pacing, and saw how people wanted the Hulk more, but still kept those character-driven elements there and pushed forward that this is Hulk's movie, show more of him, and he's going to be at the forefront. And the Hulk is seen more in this, and it makes the experience more entertaining while also focusing on the character elements of Ang Lee's version, but holding it back. Something that the 2003 version did not do and just pushed its center. Which is not what people come to a Hulk movie to see. They want to see Hulk in action. I also give credit for the fact that they didn't rinse and repeat the origin angle, but rather built off of what Ang Lee's version already established and worked from there. And it's told in a few short seconds in their own way and in a way that the comics and the TV show did. And it kicks off with a great start of him in Africa trying to find a cure and trying to control his anger. And that's what I mean when I say the pacing is better. You can tell about what's going on in the opening like that. And that's all you need. Not the long-ass time Ang Lee's version did it. And throughout the film, it shows he's fighting it, like the part in the mountain area where you see him screaming over the cliff with Betty by him and she's trying to calm him down. Scenes like that are better when you show them instead of telling them. And I know I'm repeating myself, but for the longest time, I said I tried to go back to Ang Lee's version and appreciate it for that angle. And I just can't because the fucking pacing is just so boring and it makes the film unwatchable and so damn much could have been cut because I get what it's trying to be but it was so slow and boring this film realized that and it paced itself better and it gave more time to establish Bruce and him with Betty and the general and how he's fighting the Hulk inside him I also appreciated for the fact that they went with the villain from the comics and the show and just didn't combine villains into one, this time being the abomination. So it was cool to see an actual villain brought to life this time. So overall, I got to say, the story is much better at being a Hulk film while also focusing a lot on the tragic side of Bruce. So I really appreciate it for that. And on a technical side, this is a very well-made film. I was caught interest when I heard Louis Leterrier was directing, despite my expectations being in the middle, because he did a great job with Transporter 1 and 2 and Unleashed with Chet Lee. And his directing in those movies gave them flair and gave them great energy. And it also applies here, and I think it suits the Hulk. This is definitely more like a movie as opposed to Ang Lee's interpretation, which was shot more like an art house project just with Hulk shoved in it. And that's what I liked about this one more. It's more of a movie and its filmmaking suits the world of the Hulk more. And it's a great looking film. The budget is more so on the screen than I think in the last one. I think it's shot a lot better. There's some great on-location shooting. Ludus actually shot it in Rio. So there's some practicality in the sets. The shots of Rio, while beautiful, definitely set up. This is a place that Bruce would definitely hide in. And I love that cliff shot of him screaming in the rain and the camera pulls back. That was a great shot. And the editing I must give no to to. It's definitely much better. It is an artsy fartsy and trying to be smarter than it actually is. Like the last one which was filmed to the brim with annoying comic book panel editing. Distracting from what's going on. I know Alfred Hitchcock does it but I don't know. It just feels... Like that, like the Ang Lee one just, it just, it didn't offer anything there. It just felt like, I don't know what it is about the Ang Lee one. It just, I know Hitchcock did it, but it just, it just didn't add much to the film. Compared to say like Spider-Man, which actually feels like it's, it just didn't suit the Hulk's universe is what I'm trying to say. But it's edited better here. And in those moments, 
He he actually also knows how to shoot the Hulk in a way where he doesn't show the CGI in a way that's fake or unbelievable. And even at times, like the fight in the end, I like the lighting around him with the fire to help add the illusion that he really is there and it knows how to hide the CGI. The same goes for Abomination. That, I will say this, this, that's one thing I got to give Ang Lee credit for was the look of Hulk in that movie. And the same applies here, even though I think it's done better here. And speaking of action, I will say the Ang Lee one had some great action too. And this one I think has some much better action. The action scenes are shot fantastically, like the chase scene in the opening where they're running through Rio and they chase him into a factory he works at. I love the way he shoots the scene where it's shot in a quick and energized way. He runs into a dark corner and you see nothing for a sec. And then his face as the Hulk comes through the dark almost in a way to say, I'm here, bitches, and you're going to be seeing more of me. And that's artsy and fartsy done in the right way without being overbearing. And when the action is on screen, it's well shot. There's some great setup to these action scenes. There's some scenes on location. When it is done on green screen, you're using CGI. It's also done very well. There's some great set building. I can't tell which is which in some of these scenes. And there's some really great stunts too in this movie. Like when Tim Roth faces the Hulk and he literally kicks him across the way. And the stunts themselves look very good. I don't know if either Edward Norton or Tim Roth did any of those stunts. I couldn't find any info that confirmed they did their own stunts. But either way, it gets praised because if they did, shows how passionate they were. And if they didn't, shows how they did a great job of hiding them and how well it's filmed. So, yeah, I think it's a greatly made film and I definitely feel it's a much more exciting film. I will say one thing that this is lacking on was the 2003 version, which I got to give credit to again, is the score. The score in that movie is much better, and it should be, was composed by Danny Elfman, and who knows how to score his music. Why do you think he's friends with Tim Burton? This one was done by Craig Armstrong, who has done so much better, most notably Kiss of the Dragon. Besides that, though, I think it's a better made film than the 2003 one, and I definitely think it does a better job being more entertaining. Speaking of Edward Norton and Tim Roth, the acting in the film is also great. The biggest problem I had with the 2003 version was Eric Bana, who to me was so miscast as Bruce Banner as he gave him this awkward computer nerd personality and just this... I don't know if it's the direction or the writing, but Eric's performance just came off as one note and just awkward. And it just made it hard for me to like him as a character because he was so one note and he just, it made him weird to me. Which, yes, I get what they were trying to do, but how they did it, like the execution just made him come off as a creep that I just didn't want to listen to. And he had no chemistry with the other cast members. And just when he needs to get angry, it just sounds like he's auditioning. But here we get Edward Norton, who to me is a huge improvement over Eric. Because Edward just feels better suited to play this character. Because for one thing, he has a better range of emotion to use than Eric. Because I feel he doesn't overdo it with the weird side of the character. He gives him this sort of lone wanderer personality who's looking for answers on who and what is going on inside him and what this virus is. And Edward just understands the character of Bruce better in his human form. And he does a better job of embodying Bruce. And finding a way for us to sympathize with him without being a block of wood like how Banna was. And I think the fact that Edward was a fan of the comics and the show really shows a lot of how passionate he was about this film. And I know people involved with this movie are mad at him because of how much he made them cut, which, yeah, I can see that in one particular area, which I'll get into later. But I think his performance really gives us a better sense of a guy fighting himself to stay in control. I thought that was executed perfectly. And on top of that, I thought his face came through the Hulk a lot better. 
Because as good as Ang Lee's version was, as I said, uh, the action in that film was great and the look of the Hulk himself was done well. But to me, Eric's face just didn't come through the Hulk. But rather, it just looked like some creature out in the open. Here, I feel Edward and his face come through the Hulk a lot better. So you don't see just a creature, but you see the man that this creature was. And when you look at like how they were able to do it, I think it handles that aspect a lot better. And it makes for the scenes for him much more impactful and more in line with what I feel the Hulk is. So yes, Edward Norton did a, an amazing job playing this character. And I think all around was the perfect choice to portray the Hulk. And as I said earlier, I love the fact that they took influence from both the show and the comics. Because now we have an actual villain instead of combining a group of villains into one. And we get the Abomination, who in his human form is a meal played by Tim Roth. A gifted actor who... Whenever I see his name on screen, I always know he's going to give a great performance. And here it's no different. And his character in this movie isn't one that you would expect the main villain being that at first it seems like he's just doing it as a favor to the general to catch this guy. So he just seems like a secondary villain. So you think Thunderbolt Ross is going to be the villain. But once again, the movie pulls the rug out from under you and you discover that he becomes the main villain. And Tim Roth himself is this guy who kind of sees capturing the Hulk as a sort of sport, as you see him going through everything to catch him, getting kicked around. And I like the fact that towards the end, he becomes the very thing he set out to catch and almost at times becomes worse as he destroys the city. And I think Tim Roth does a great job with that. Uh, and in the Abomination form, once again, like Norton, I think his face comes through it very well. And at times, a little bit more evil looking. I like those, uh, I like the bones in him that come out, like the spine in the back of him and his body. I thought it was a really cool design. And when you find out that Tim Roth himself did the motion in capturing, you got to give the guy a lot of credit. Uh, especially how he put in a lot of effort in the same way Willem Dafoe did with his Green Goblin performance, being that he also did his own stunts. And while his performance doesn't reach the standard of his amazing performance, it's great in its own way. And in the same way, he played a great villain in Planet of the Apes. I And I like Tim Burns' Planet of the Apes. I like Tim Roth in that too. William Hurt also does a good job as General Thunderbolt Ross. I like him in his own way from Sam Elliott's performance and Ang Lee's version because they both play General Thunderbolt Ross in their own way. Sam Elliott plays him as Sam Elliott and uh, no nonsense general. William Hurt plays him with that tough general persona, but he also kind of brings more of a caring side with him to the surface. Like, he's not just doing it for the fact that he wants to study the Hulk, but he's also doing it for the safety of his daughter. But unlike Sam Elliott, he doesn't go into the shoot first, ask questions later, so there's kind of some restraint to him. And I think William Hurt does a great job giving the character his own spin. He's not in the film a whole lot, as Sam Elliott is in the 2003 one, but for what he did, he did a good job. And same goes for Liv Tyler, who plays Betty, who makes the character her own as well. I think Edward Norton and her have some good chemistry with each other that at times does move a little too fast, but I can forgive it. Because the minute she meets him again, she's like, oh, I missed you all that. And they're making out on the street. And I'm like, lady, you haven't seen this guy in forever. And I'm, we all know you're with some other guy. And you're not even questioning where he's been. They're, and just their romance just seemed a little rushed. But I can forgive it because... Their on-screen chemistry works well. I like the part where they're going through uh, New York and they have to take a taxi and this guy's driving around all crazy. And they do well for each other. But other actors, you got Tim Blake Nelson as this guy named Samuel Stearns who's trying to help make the cure for Bruce. You have a quick cameo from Stan Lee, as I said. Ty Burrell as this guy 
who Betty is dating, even get Robert Downey Jr. in a short cameo as Tony. And the cast, for the most part, do a fantastic job with their characters and really bring the characters to life a lot better and in their own way from the 2003 film. Now, being this is a Hulk movie, you'd expect there to be a lot of effects in action. And you'd be damned right! But the first thing that must be talked about is the look of the Hulk himself, which I said earlier is a much better interpretation of the character from the comic books. I think it looks a lot better than the Hulk of the first one. The mixed use of CGI and practical effects really give him a great sense of realism to the look of how he is in the comics. The movement's a lot better when he's, like, when he's jumping and the fight parts are a lot better. And it should, with the advancement of technology, they were able to get a lot more out of the Hulk's movement and have Edward Norton's face come through it. And the ideas for scenes like when he needs to stop Abomination and he falls out of the plane and he lets himself turn into the Hulk with Edward falling back as himself. I thought that was a really cool mix of a green screen and Edward doing it himself. And it was a cool-ass stunt to... And the parts when he is on screen destroying stuff and Hulk smashing, it's a great mix of practical stunts and practical effects and CGI and green screen. Like the part when he's grabbing the dudes, chasing him in the bottle factory, he's throwing them around like rag dolls and the military's closing in on him. It's over the camera, like how he grabs the camera and starts throwing it around. Real destruction in the environment considering they're fighting on bottles and then you get the big fight at the end between him and some, and the Abomination with some really great looking models and the green screen. Some great homages to the comics. Like you get the famous Hulk smash quote here. I also like how he takes the two cars and makes like boxing gloves out of them. I won't spoil all the action scenes, but for what they are, they look great. And definitely show a step up in the effects department, especially with the advancement of technology and Louis Leterrier staying true to make the movie feel real and really show more of the Hulk. So, yeah, I could definitely say this is definitely the definitive Hulk movie and a much better film as well. I mean, it has its problems, unlike the other one where that one is heavy on character development. This has the opposite where it's too light on the, the considering the Betty Ross and him portions, which... I think may have been some of the stuff that Edward cut, but I'll pick it up on the DVD and see how it is, and because I know they'll be on the deleted scenes. But that's really the only problem I have with this film, because the bottom line is The Incredible Hulk is a smashing good time that really shows how you can improve a film with the right people to create a much funner and more exciting experience. That, while focusing on the human side of the Hulk, still gives us what we love about the Hulk and what we wanted to see in the 2003 one. So yes, I highly recommend you pick this up when it hits DVD. It's a fantastic ride and shows how much better we are getting with comic book films because we've had two great ones in the form of Iron Man and this and I can't wait and I really hope we see more like these and I can't wait to see another Hulk film And I can't wait to see what comic book films we get next year. So when it comes down to it, I give The Incredible Hulk a 9.5 out of 10. And it deserves it. It therefore gets the Alexander Seal of Approval. Definitely a better Hulk film. A much funner film. If you were disappointed by the 2003 Hulk film, check this one out. You will have a much, much better time. So, yeah, that is my review for The Incredible Hulk. And next time I'm going to do a review on Kung Fu Panda. You guys will be seeing my thoughts on that film soon. Um, I also am working on a review of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I know I'm going to get some people going to be like, what? With my opinion. But you will see what I feel when you guys see it. Please be respectful. But with all that said, I will see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of... The Incredible Hulk. What did you guys think of this movie? Did you guys enjoy it? I would love to know you guys' thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on the wonderful world of YouTube. Bye.